Hello, my name is Peabeck and this is my video guide to building the Ringer Space. Um, first of all, I'd like to apologise that I have a stinking cold, um, so my voice is all over the place. And secondly, I'm a complete amateur at making videos, so so here we go. The Ringer Space is what I've been using since the start of TH9, when I wanted to um, upgrade all my defences whilst retaining my loot. And it's worked out very well. Uh, so, let, we put the clan castle in the middle, let's start building our core. The jewels of TH9, our expos are there, uh, alongside the mortars on the other side, and then we surround that by air defence to give us a nice strong core. Um, now, no prizes for guessing, a ringer space, my ringer space is a ring base, and if you haven't encountered one of those before, what we have is, out the middle layer, is what I like to call a ring of fluff. Fluff being items which defence-led troops are not attracted to. Uh, this is very, very important for the success of a ring base. So we sp space our storages out. So to take every storage is going to take some real effort and a, quite a large army. Um, and a, we'll put the drill there too. So what these are all items that defence-led troops like giants, balloons, hogs, etc. are just not attracted to. And this is very important for the success of the base. We're going to put each one of these in its own compartment, creating a very strong middle layer that is, real, is a real hard job to get into the middle. Um, right, so before we stick our outer layer of defences in, I'm just going to extend these elixir compartments like this <coughs> and drop a, a wizard tower in here. Conventional de designs dictate that wizard towers overlook your storages and they do a little here but it's, it's not that important. With it. It's important that they sit in the ring. Um, so let me put the other defences in too. I'm going to put two archer towers here two archer towers here and archer tower there and there. I'm going to put Teslas on the edges. They can zap wall breakers approaching. <laughs> right, um, and stick my four cannons in the middle like that. And then I have two defences left so the mortar can go there and the final cannon can go there. So you can see the outer ring of defences. And what's really important about a ring base is is when one is uh, when one defence gets attacked and destroyed, there is a closer one to the left or right of it than there is to the core. So a pack of hogs will jump in here or jump in wherever. They will kill that, then they will go to that one. They'll kill that, they'll go to that one, they'll kill that, they'll go to that one. They'll never jump to the core. You will find that sometimes a few stray ones near the back of the pack will jump to the core, but it's okay because the expos and whatever you've got in there is going to hopefully handle that. <coughs> so, if I start, I want to put the spaces for the traps. These are what I call my corners of boom. Two giant bombs, a pack of hogs strolling over those is going to get a real headache. Um, and I'm going to put in this gap here, I'm just going to put my builder's huts like this, and then I'm gonna st if I start filling in the walls it should begin to take shape quite nicely and uh oh I've run out of walls so what are we gonna, how are we gonna address this so if we introduce funneling next to the builders hut so giants dropped here will stroll over here which is really annoying if you drop a ton of giants and a ton of wall breakers the wall breakers will come here the giants will stroll over here you've disrupted an attack before it's even really started so I'll use those walls here oh I'm still too short now this is where I break my strive for symmetry and create a weakness here uh, and complete my walls that side um, I will try and mitigate this weakness with the outer buildings as you'll see shortly. Um, so let me put in spring traps for my filters. These should hopefully catch giants and not barbarians. Uh, if barbarians come strolling in here they should attack 
the builder's hut before choosing to go this, whereas a giant would come in here and hopefully <coughs> hit that. Um, I, and if there is a pack of giants coming through these holes, then they will hopefully be followed by a healer, which this uh, air-seeking mine will take care of. Now, for my other two trap corners, I'll use the remainder of my bombs. Uh, oh, I tend to like put the string ones, or the spring ones, at the bottom, and the there we go. For some reason, not many people like attacking from the top, so I consider this this more effective here. Okay, so that's our base with the outer ring of defences, the middle layer of fluff and a strong core in the middle. Uh, I'm just going to push these out a little bit to create more white space, more blank space for the attacker so that when the attacker sees the base immediately it doesn't strike him that there's a double giant bomb hole as obviously. I mean the great, good you know, you, you very competent attackers will, will know. But still, you've got to guess where it can be, because it could be here, it could be here, or it could be, this could be full of Teslas. Where, where are things? You're trying to create a little bit of confusion when they're deciding whether or not to attack you. Okay, so let me do the outer walls. We'll put the <coughs> Eternal there, the laboratory there for symmetry, the spell factory down the bottom, so it's easy access for when you come out of raids and you want to start your spells again. Uh, and this, this weakness here, I'm going to try and... Um, Oh, let me put the camps in first. I'll put the camps in here. Uh, OCD symmetry. Okay, so this uh, this weakness here, I'm going to try and solve this weakness by putting the builder huts in a row here. And if you look at the replays, it is very, very rare that an attacker will see this weakness and exploit it by attacking from this side. They tend to see the mines and pumps on the other three sides and think, I'm going to go that way, or they're going to try and go for the DE, or they're going to sort of carry on an attack from the town hall side. Uh, the very, very smart guys think, see that, and take advantage of it by coming through here. Uh, <coughs> but most people don't. They, they, they just, I don't know, they see the mines and the pumps, or the DE, or the town hall, and they, they go that way. So, let me just fill in the mines and pumps spread everything else rather equally don't put all your gold mines together because that's going to make you a target uh, one nice little bonus is that the mines and the pumps obviously are high hit points as well so it's not as easy to get through here as it, as it would be here <laughs> barracks are very easy to go through Okay. So we're nearly finished. <coughs> and there's our finished product. Um, so, the uh, reason I pull these buildings back a little bit is to push the spawn points back. And with that, if you drop wall breakers here, chances are they're going to go to this side. Um, so, it again, disrupts the attack before it starts. So people drop a pack of giants here, and are followed by a bunch of wall breakers that go over here. Uh, it does. It makes them very upset. Um, so let me show you the finished item. So this was me at Christmas when I pushed up to masters, which this base was perfectly able to do. As a starter, TH9, I you get your expos up, uh, and then I slowly upgrading everything. Now, when you do upgrade things, uh, make sure you retain your wall of defences. Uh, if you go moving something out, say I was upgrading this and I move it over here to create diversions and put something, you know, whatever in there, this is going to be really bad because your hogs are going to kill this and then it's, let's pretend your hogs are coming around here. They'll kill, 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 kill. They'll kill this and then they will not jump to here because that is a greater distance than the jump to here and when they jump to here you're dead because your core is going to get nuked and <coughs> you've broken the ring do not break the ring now what's really good about this base um, is that there's a lot of flexibility here you can do a lot of things so let's say you're upgrading your air defense and you know let's let's swap the air defense with the 
with the wizard towers. Let's say all your wizard towers are done and you're, you're working on your air defense. <laughs> Put your expos pointing upwards for extra air cover there that you've lost. Um, that would work as well. I've used that sometimes when you get these horrible TH10s with their level 6 goblins and jump spells. They keep bouncing into your storages. Um, wizard towers overlooking your storages is, uh, is fairly, fairly awesome. Um, if you've got a lot of DE and you wish to protect it a little further, put this in here. But again, don't go, don't go putting this in here because this is not an item of fluff. You have to put fluff in here because imagine the the hogs, the giants, the balloons, and they'll kill, 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 kill. Oh, and they'll jump into here. And as soon as they jump into here, they'll jump into your core and you're dead. Uh, so what you want to do here is put that over there, and then whatever you're upgrading, you know. Put your drill in here, and then use an, up an item that's being upgraded on the outside. Uh, this acts as a nice distraction. People put their giants down here. It comes to the things. So, so to go back to the uh, to the base, I've used the decorations to push the the spawn back a little bit more. I mean, the smart players don't care; they'll just spawn on it. But a lot of players don't, and they pushes them back a little bit further so the wall breakers again you drop a load of wall breakers here they're going to go over here so so yeah that is my ring of space um, if you're starting out th9 and looking for a base to help you protect loot whilst you get things upgraded then give it a whirl and let me know how you get on uh, thank you very much for listening bye bye